If you like to drive around and talk about the latest happenings, this is the channel you need. So subscribe and follow Carmentary. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Carmentary. Me, Neil Hartman, driving in my car, talking to myself. I mean, talking to you folks. Always appreciate. Uh, the comments, the likes, and everything, uh, and the reactions I get from these commentary videos. <clears throat> Today's topic is going to be another heavy one. We're just going to dive right in. I haven't even research, rehearsed this or thought about it too much, but judging from the reaction of my episode about the helmet rule in the Seiko, I did that in English and Japanese, and I got a ton of comments. It stirred up some strong emotions in people, and... I think that's great. I like that, and I hope we can continue down that road in today's episode. So, let's see. What should the title be? Resort Growth and Development in the 2020s. How's that sound? Uh, this is kind of a topic that a lot of people like to get into on Facebook. I see these long comments come in on different posts. Uh, a lot of local Niseko Japanese people will at times pipe up with their opinions as to what's happening with the growth of the resort area. So in this episode, I am talking about Niseko in general, but this could be, um, I mean, you could look at this as a generalization for all of Japan as far as ski and snowboard tourism and resorts go, because it's kind of happening everywhere. The pace just happens to be very fast and the leader is Niseko in Japan. Hakuba also growing very rapidly. Uh, Furano here in Hokkaido is another area that really seems to be taking off. Uh, and it, it's gonna keep on going. All the, the municipalities, all the local governments have sort of, you know, they're freaking out, man. They see Kuchan and Niseko bringing in a lot of tax money, getting a lot of investment and they want this to happen in their areas, so everybody's jumping on the bandwagon, trying to bring in the tourists, trying to bring in the investors, etc., etc. So, <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about a little bit was this sort of push and pull going on constantly between uh, those who obviously want to come in, buy real estate at a low price, flip it, or build something and sell it for a very high price. Really, really big margins. I don't know if there's so many of them left. The The real heyday for the super low prices in the central Niseko area there may be gone. I know a lot of people are starting to work further out and develop outlying kind of communities where the prices are still cheap. But then again, those prices may not go up for a little while, so you have to play the long game. Now, on the other side of the coin, you have a lot of people who are longtime locals and have seen the resort and resort area from the time when there was no one here. Uh, I was, I, I've been here, I've been riding in Niseko for 30 years, uh, maybe even more than 30 years now altogether. And it was truly empty. I mean, Truly, truly empty. You have to understand this. If you come here now, you've got lift lines, you've got all these hotels, you've got restaurants, you've got a lot of these places you can go and enjoy services. At the time, there was none of that really. There were uh, there was a there was a soba machine near the Kuchan train station that you could go late at night and you'd put in like 300 yen, and this machine would make you this hot soba and like the, the hot water would like spill out of the bowl and the noodles would be half out and you'd have to reach in there and pull out this hot thing of soup and you'd stand there in the cold snow and eat it. I mean that was the extent of really good après ski service in the Seiko area about 20 years ago. Uh, there was no, uh, the Seiko Mart, we had one convenience store, I think that's always been there. There was nothing else. The slopes were empty. There was powder everywhere, and that's why we all gathered there. And then me and many other people obviously started talking about it uh, 
taking videos, sharing photos, telling people back home how amazing it was. And this has spread and spread and spread. And now in 2020, we have this massive uh, growing resort that has gotten really big. But in comparison to a, a Whistler or a, I don't know what, like a Jackson Hole, uh, an Aspen, all these other sort of global brand name resorts, I don't know the numbers, but I, I think Nisek was still fairly uh, small in size. But within the next few years, within the next three to five years, there are a whole bunch of new developments that are either in the planning stages or in the early stages of construction will probably be completed in a few years. This is definitely going to bring the number of beds in the resort area. It's, I think it's set to like double what it is now. Don't quote me on that, but that's roughly what I've heard. So the argument here from the longtime locals is that it's overdevelopment. There's too many hotels, too many beds, and that means too many people. So the mountain gets crowded. And admittedly, the Niseko mountain range, although a huge mountain range, it's quite big, it's not the size of like a, a Whistler or a, a Jackson Hole or a, you know some of the European big resorts. It, especially the lift access runs. It's a, it's a more compact experience. If you include all the back country and the side country and you explore around, you've got this really, really kind of big field to explore. But for the general skier, for the, the beginner, the intermediate skier, they're gonna be on the courses. It's gonna mean really long lift lines. Um, and there's a lot of people who are commenting that the resort mountainside development is not keeping up with the village development side. Mm, this is a point well heated. I must agree. Uh, I think, I mean, a lot of people have made these statements on uh, social media and both Japanese and foreign. But I, I think in general, well, I don't know. I don't know which side is more verbal about it. Um, maybe we'll find out on the comments of this video. I think sometimes the Japanese side seems to be a little more verbal in their anti-development uh, vibe. I think that comes from the fact that the Japanese side uh, has not really made great gains or great money off of the development side. It was more the soulful, you know, we, we love the mountain for its purity and we just want to ride it. So it's like the real surfer kind of mentality. Whereas the foreign influx obviously came from another country. You come in, you see an opportunity, you're like, oh man, this is like gold mine. Let's go for it. And there's no hesitation. So the money has sort of run more to the foreign side. So there's definitely a background feeling of animosity that I pick up on a lot. I speak Japanese very well. I'm very kind of deep into the Japanese side of the community here in Japan. And a lot of people speak to me about that. And there's definitely a strong layer of, uh, yeah, animosity towards some of the foreign development, especially, not all of it, but obviously there are levels within that. There are people and companies who come in and have no clue, no soul, no spirit, no love for the, the, the culture and the history here. And they just see, they just see yen signs and they're just here to make money. And obviously that can really piss off a lot of people. So what is the future of Niseko and where will that equilibrium be found? I, I'd love to, to know that and may, I don't know if, is there a good example of another mountain town globally somewhere that found the right path to stable development? What is it now that's the popular word? My daughter has learned it in school and talks about it all the time. The SDGs, is that what it is? Uh, stable Development Goals, is that what it stands for? S sustainable Development Goals, excuse me. That's like a global thing now. Everybody's trying to, for the planet, you know, save the planet, be 
We need to have sustainable development goals. It sounds like a bunch of horseshit to me, but uh, I hope globally we can work that out. The same thing has to ring true for resort development, right? We're part of the, the world and society and the planet. There has to be either rules laid out that everyone has to follow to keep this in a stable sort of uh, pace, right? Because otherwise, it's going to be like the bubble all over again. Do you folks remember the bubble? I don't because I was too young. The bubble burst in Japan economically in 1991. That was the year I arrived in Japan. I arrived thinking, Japan, it's huge, there's tons of money here, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna, you know, make money. And I got my first job and within like a month or two, uh, one of the producers, that was a radio station, he came to me and he said, Neil, you came to Japan at the wrong time. The bubble burst. And I was like, bubble? What bubble? I was 19 years old. I had no friggin' idea what he was talking about. I didn't understand anything about economics, etc. I just saw bling, 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 you know? Japan looked like it was doing good to me. But he was right, and from the 1991 all through the 90s, it was like a big downhill slide. I was able to keep my job and become successful at what I did and what I do, and it didn't affect me, maybe, well, no, it probably did. I mean, I don't know what would have happened if I had gotten here 10 years early. Maybe I would have made a shitload of money. Maybe I would have had enough money to buy property in Niseko. And then maybe I would have been one of the people to build multi-million dollar homes and sell them to rich people who love the word ultra luxury. I don't know. You never know these things, right? But that's what happened to Japan as a whole in 1991. The economic bubble burst, everything went downhill. That led to the demise of the ski scene, led to the demise of Niseko, and it led to those super cheap prices that instigated this huge bubble we are living in now. So there's no big economic bubble going on in Japan at all right now. In fact, the economic prognosis looks quite bad for Japan. Japan is now considered a cheap Asian country to come and visit. That's why all the tourists are here, right? So I do see a little bubble, maybe it's a pretty good sized bubble, in this whole ski resort industry scene. Niseko is a definite, uh, you know, definitely one, one of those kind of bubbles. Now how big that bubble will get and if and when it bursts, well, who knows the answer to that? could be real soon, or it could just keep on going. I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts on this. Um, long comments, I love them, I read them all, and maybe soon I'll uh, I'll feature some of the, the more interesting comments on a future episode. I like doing that sometimes. As I said, I don't have all the answers, but I kind of feel that I'm right in the middle uh, of both the Japanese cultural side of all this, the foreign, side of all this and I hope that uh, I can help hmm, I don't know spread some light on the situation and hopefully we can all work together to find the correct path to a sustainable development goal yeah NSDG Niseko sustainable development goals ah all right that sounded pretty good. Well, I don't think there was, mm, there was no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow in this episode, but I hope you enjoyed that talk. I appreciate you guys always tuning in. Uh, see you next time on Carpentary, and remember to drive safe. If you like to drive around and talk about the latest happenings, this is the channel you need. So subscribe and follow Carmentary